impress God, what we have, have to offer him would make the deal worse. That the gap of acceptability to God is too great. It's so great. We're in the negative column. We are dead in our trespasses and sin to God. And those that would put up their, their, their good works, the Bible says they are as filthy rags because all of our, our good works that we do on this earth are laced with self-praise. Even our good works to somehow be saved are negative. It's a negative thing to bring. Yet in the face of that salvation faith says... In the face of the negativity of what we can bring God, salvation faith says, I believe God's promise of Christ is all I need. I believe, that's faith. I believe that something outside of me is all that I need, despite all of my sin. This is not being weakened, the verse number 19. And being not weak or weakened in faith, he considered not his own body. Not being weakened in faith that believes on Jesus Christ is not staring at the fact that you shouldn't be able to get saved. And getting stuck there. Do you know if people get stuck there? This is not being weakened in your faith on Christ. The reality says you should not be able to be saved. And let's be honest, we have sinned a million times against God. How could we escape? If you are honest with yourself, you, know, you, are, you get to a pretty low place when you realize that it should not even be possible legally or judiciously in any way that you who have offended a perfect God a billion times should be let into heaven or allowed into heaven. It should not even be possible. It really shouldn't. Reality did not shake Abraham's faith though. His deadness of his body and the deadness of Sarah's womb, the deadness of his body and the deadness of Sarah's womb did not stop him from believing fully, the scripture says in verse 20, 21. That God would keep his promise. Not just could keep it, but God would keep it. Would keep it. Such faith in the promise of Christ will save you too. Despite your deadness to God. Notice please the scripture. It says, and being not weak in faith, verse number 19, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. All of these points about Abraham are not for Abraham's sake, the end of the verse says. We preach them for your sake, who believe by faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. We draw application from them because it's talking about how you get saved, how I get saved. We see something else about salvation faith here. Notice, please. Notice clearly. Look there at verse 18 and 19. You'll notice that the timing of Abraham's faith standing before God in verse number 18 in front of all the stars is spoken of as the exact same timing of verse number 19 when he was about 100. But look at me, it wasn't at the same time. Verse number 18 and 19, the scripture states it as if it was all at the same time. Let me say it again. There was a 25-year gap there. It was not the same time. There was a, a 25 years between he stood, before he, when he stood be, uh, underneath the stars and when he had, the, had Isaac as a baby, as 100 years old. Now understand that the promise and the keeping of the promise are separate. 25 years difference. And in fact, in that 25 years, look here, look. In that 25 years, Abraham was not dead as far as having children. Do you remember the handmaid routine, the story? Sarah offered her handmaid and he had a, he had a child, Ishmael, by that handmaid. So the deadness that's spoken of here in the same timing was when Abraham was 100 years old. Well, is there some kind of discrepancy in here in Scripture? No, it's God speaking of Abraham's faith as being consistent in the exact same faith when he gave him the promise underneath the stars and he just believed that it would happen as the day that he was 100 years old. He believed it just the same. A 25-year gap and Abraham was still believing that God could and would keep his promise. Why is that important? So what? How does that apply to you? Here's the so what. This is the same as our salvation faith. The person who trusts Christ as Savior one day will still be trusting the Savior 25 years later. We have a very cheap view of what it means to be a Christian in America especially. We have a very cheap view of professions in Jesus Christ that never last. Those who profess Jesus Christ and do not last trusting the Savior have never had Christ. The same decision, the same trust and faith that is a genuine faith on the Lord Jesus Christ at point one, 25 years later, will still be trusting Christ and bearing the fruit of it. 
It is not a profession, friend, in Jesus Christ that saves you. It is faith on the Savior. And when that happens, you are born again. You cannot go back. You cannot change. 25 years later, you will still consistently be trusting Christ alone for salvation. Salvation faith is a consistent faith until death. It is permanence. It is perseverance. It is continual. Till the day you die, you'll be trusting Christ. It is not a flippant decision of emotionalism. It's permanent faith on Christ alone. Not some fluctuating passing belief of an experience or an emotional moment that somebody had or some kind of event. Genuine salvation faith in Christ alone sticks because it's real and it is genuine and it doesn't come from the mind. It comes as, a, as an amazing, miraculous wind of the Holy Spirit allowing you to put faith in the Lord Jesus Christ within you and forever you are changed. Oh, how flippant. Our theology and our preaching is in churches about what it means to be saved. Profession in Christ that falls away is not faith in Christ. Genuine salvation faith in Christ sticks. It lasts. It keeps on standing. It keeps on bearing fruit of faith. Practice right theology and let us as a church practice right theology. This is why we can boldly discern that a man that denies Christ now never knew him before. Did you hear that? A man that denies Christ now never knew him before. Faith in Christ doesn't run out. It's not like, oh, I think I'll believe in Christ today, but maybe not tomorrow. Faith in Christ is something of the soul. It is a legal, contractual thing from heaven. It involves the writing of your name in the book of life. It, it involves the Holy Spirit coming inside of you. It involves you becoming a child of God. It, it, it involves what happened on the cross being laid to your account, imputed to you. It involves God saying, I never again will impute sin to him. That doesn't happen by a flippant emotional decision. Faith in Christ sticks. A man that lives for sin, ignoring the Savior, never knew the Savior, no matter what he said before or what he professed. Genuine faith is permanent. Salvation, repentance, and faith are permanent. And that's why, along with the, uh, the theology of Romans, I could preach in Galatians and every other book in the New Testament, why I could preach to you, if you are saved, you will never lose it. Salvation is from above. It's something that's real. It's not a flippant decision made because you're emotional some night when a high-pressured preacher twists your arm. Faith in Christ is faith in Christ, not in an emotion. It's not faith in faith. It's not faith in a prayer. It's not faith in walking in the aisle. It's in Christ. And once a man, a woman, has put his faith in Christ, there's no turning back. There's no turning back. It's a sealed deal. Literally, the seal of the Holy Spirit. It's a sealed deal. That's how this applies to you, that Abraham, in verse number 18, before the stars, got a promise. And 25 years later, he was still, the faith was still intact, and it was, it was still there. It's an example of what salvation faith really is. Abraham had faith in God's promise and continued to have faith until it began to be fulfilled at the birth of Isaac when he was 100 years old. He wasn't affected by all the reasons he had to doubt what God said. He kept on getting older and older and older, didn't he? Now listen, I want you to understand something. When he took that handmaid, and when he, he had relations with her that he shouldn't have, he was rushing God, but his faith had never changed. He was actually trying to work it out for God. I'm going to help you uh, work out that promise there. He, his faith was in the promise. Please understand that, or God would never use him as the template of faith. Notice verse number 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. What God had said, that threefold promise, what he had promised Abraham... He staggered not at it. Verse 20, he, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. As we apply this to you and me, a man's faith to be saved, there are many reasons that a person staggers to believe that Christ alone is sufficient. They stagger. You witness to them. They're, they stagger. They're in this church. They stagger. They may never mention it, but they stagger in unbelief. You may be here staggering this morning in unbelief. You're struggling to believe that Christ alone is enough. That's a hard thing. We always want to add something. We're Americans. We're hard workers. You're supposed to not get anything free. It's hard to 
abandon trying to do 